Have you ever found the perfect location to film your scene, but it turns out it's just way too small to fit all your gear? I absolutely know how frustrating this could be, as I've encountered this many times here on the channel and even in some of my film projects. But the good news is I found plenty of ways to get around this and still get a great look for your scene without the need for relocating or breaking the bank. And the best part is you could do it too. And I'm gonna show you how by offering a few tips and tricks, as well as break down these two scenes here. So let's get into it. Hey, what's happening everyone? My name is Ryan, and if you're new with us, welcome. I truly appreciate you being here. There have been plenty of times throughout my career when there was a space that just wasn't big enough to create the shot that I was envisioning. And that's okay, not every space is gonna be the perfect location and not every budget is gonna allow for you to create a space of your own. And in terms of YouTube, sometimes more space just isn't an option. Kind of like this space here, I have to make do with what I have for now because I am currently renovating my new studio space. I'll be sharing more details about that in another video, but in terms of space, sometimes we just have to use what we have. So how do we do that? Well, here are a few tips and tricks that could help. And the first one I wanna talk about is composition and framing. Now, of course, there is no getting around a space that is too small, but what if I told you there were many tricks that you could use to make the space look bigger and add more depth? Let me explain what I mean. One tip is to just shoot facing the corner. If you have enough space to shoot against the wall and still have enough depth for your scene, then that works great. But if you don't, then turning the camera towards the corner could work really well because this will give you more space between the subject and the background, adding more depth to the shot. This will also create leading lines, which will help to focus the attention on the main point of interest. Or if you're filming a YouTube video, then yourself, kind of like what I'm doing here. But let's talk a little bit more about framing your shot. For me, it's important to do this first, especially in a situation where you have a small room, because it's gonna give you a really good overall look of what kind of light is spilling in the room naturally, where the subject will stand, where you could set your light stands, etc., which will absolutely set you up for success throughout the rest of the shoot. But let's switch things up a little bit and let's talk about gear. It has seriously never been a better time to be a filmmaker because the technology has never been so accessible, easier to use and affordable. And these days there are really small compact lights that give a ton of output, which is something that I've been more attracted to for my projects over the last few years personally. And this is because they are so small, I can place them virtually anywhere and still get a great image. Now, these days, there are plenty of options out there that you could choose from in terms of smaller lights. But lately, I've been really liking the lights that are coming out by June. Seriously, these are probably some of the most powerful lights at this size that I've ever used in my entire career. Because these are so lightweight, you can put them on pretty much any lighting stand and they're gonna be just fine. Now, this isn't a sponsor, but June did send me the Molus G200 bicolor light and the M20C bicolor and RGB light to try them out and see what I can create with them. Now, I've been using these lights for some time now and I seriously love them and I'm super excited to start using them in future lighting breakdowns. Now, again, this isn't a sponsor, but I will leave links down in the description below if you'd like to check them out further and I just want to give a huge thank you to June. But beyond all that, let's switch gears to something that's just as important but is sadly often overlooked and that is using your space well. This may seem like an obvious one but let me explain. Where your subject stands, looks, and moves around will determine where your lights and your modifiers will be placed. Now, I'll explain this a little bit more in our lighting breakdown a little bit later in the video, but this is also gonna ensure that there isn't any unnatural light spilling on the subject as they're walking by. But of course, you're still working with a very small space, so how do we add more depth within the shot? Well, one way could be to just film at the corner like we mentioned before, but another great way that I like to use personally is to add more depth within the foreground. This could be adding a plant or some some kind of object that makes sense for the scene, but it's closer to the camera, a little bit off to the side, adding more depth and layers to the scene, making the space feel just a little bit bigger than it might be. Now, this is something I like to do a lot in my work and especially in my YouTube videos where I don't have a lot of space to work with. Okay, so that was 
a little bit more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. This here was a very tight space. This is our root cellar in our new home. We haven't actually had a chance to clean it up in here yet and use it, but it's very small and then very low ceilings as well. So very challenging to work with, but basically what I did was I used the Moles G200 to emulate our window light that's coming from this very small window, which is also lighting up my shoulder, giving me a bit of rim light or hair light. To also fill in the shadows a bit, I used the M26. See June's RGB 20 watt lamp. It was on about 50% and did really well in lifting the shadows while still maintaining that, you know, dark moody kind of basement scene, I guess. And then to take things a little bit further, I put the reflector cone on a second G200 and had that outside the door to emulate the light that was coming from the steps. That was just to give off a little bit of light there and make it feel a little bit more realistic. And for the close-up shot, picking up the jar, I actually had the reflector cone on one of the G200s to emulate the window light. And so it just looked like the light was spilling on the shelving naturally. And then I used the other G200 with the lantern softbox on it to fill the room a little bit. Now it was super fun to get this scene in this tiny little space, but one space that was even smaller than this was this scene here, a scene that I filmed for a video I did a few weeks ago. And so let's head on out of here and break down that scene and you can see the different techniques and things that I did to achieve this look. Okay, so here we are in my shop. And the reason we're here is because this is gonna be my new studio space. If you've been following the channel for some time, you've probably seen my recent posts about my family and I making this huge move and I'm moving my entire studio as well. And the reason why I bring all that up is because this is where you might see me doing a lot of my videos. The shop won't look like this. I'm gonna do a ton of renovation to make it look like a studio space. It's huge. This is gonna be the new space and I'm really excited about it. But anyway, back to the lighting breakdown. So I actually filmed this scene in my old house, the last house that I lived in, had this tiny little bathroom downstairs. I mean, this thing was so small and I honestly didn't even know that if I could pull this off when I was filming it. But here is the space here. It's kind of rectangular in shape and it's got this one door, this one entryway here and then there's a hallway that goes into the living room and then back this way. And also too, there is a huge tub here and then obviously a sink and you know, the Oval Office right there. And then some other things. So there wasn't a whole lot of space to fit any lighting stands or lighting gear. This is where getting really creative with your space really helps. And you really kind of have to just think outside of the box. So now, like I mentioned before, Jun was kind enough to send me a few lights because these lights are super small, powerful and versatile. They worked out perfectly for this lighting setup. So let me break it down here. So I knew that I was gonna need a light overhead to kind of emulate a bathroom light above my head there. So I used the M20C on a C stand and I just hung it over. This worked out really well and it comes with a grid and these barn doors. So that really helped to soften the light that was coming down onto my face. And it kind of complemented what was going on with my key light. The key light was the Molus G200. And again, that was at 2% and that was shining through a makeshift Kukaloris that I put together to kind of emulate blinds and the shadows there to give it a little bit more texture, to give it the shot a little bit more life. What I did was I put the Molus G200 here with the reflector cone. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at these. Okay, so that was shining this way. Actually, it was a little bit more that way. And um, the Kukaloris was right here, just out of frame and that was shining through onto the wall, giving that shadowy texture as if the sun was setting and peeking through the blinds into the bathroom. The C-stand literally just sat right here and it kind of almost took up that whole space and hung over and gave me that light that I needed overhead to kind of emulate the bathroom light that would be on if this character was in the bathroom. Now I set the G200 at a warmer color temperature and I set the light above me at 5600 Kelvin Got some geese flying overhead. I don't know if you guys could hear that. <laughs> and my camera was sitting right here, right outside of the door, shooting this way at me, the subject. And what this was doing was because it was such a small space, I wanted it to look a little bit bigger. So I was shooting at an angle at the corner here, kind of like what we had talked about earlier and some of the tips I gave earlier in the video. I believe I was at 35 millimeters. So I wasn't going too wide. I didn't want it to feel distorted. I wanted it to feel natural and kind of giving it that normal look. Typically you would use anywhere from 35 to 50 millimeters to get something that's really close to what our eyes see. And this really made it feel real. It, it made it more of an intimate moment being that this was such a small space. By the way, if you're interested, I was filming with 
with the Sony FX3 and I'm using the Sony 24 to 70 at 35 millimeters. Okay, so now things get really interesting as I switch over to the night scene. I switched the G200 to 6,000 Kelvin and I set my camera white balance at 3000 Kelvin. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to feel like it was at night. I switched the M20C over to about 3000 Kelvin and this just warmed up my skin. This actually adds color contrast, adding even more depth to a really tiny, small space. After using these lights in this tiny little space, I honestly don't know if I can go back to using my bigger lights. With these, they have a really low profile. They're super powerful and super versatile being that they're bicolor and one of them being RGB, it's awesome. I honestly don't like to promote anything that I don't believe in on this channel. And I truly believe that these are a game changer, especially for solo filmmakers or any filmmaker for that matter. There are a lot of reviews and specs on YouTube right now about these lights. So definitely go and check those out. But if you would like for me to do a review on these lights or even compare them to some of my other lighting, then let me know in the comments below because I'd love to make that video for you guys. And also let me know what you guys think about this look and this new shop. And if you have any ideas for the new studio space, I'd love to hear them. With all the new technology and all of the information out there, it really hasn't been a better time to start your journey as a filmmaker. And it's honestly never been easier to get the images that you're envisioning for your films or your videos. But in the end, it all boils down to you. Your experiences, unique view of the world, and your passion is what will truly make your work stand out from all the rest. So I just wanna encourage you to practice often and keep making films. And no matter the space, big or small, I just want you to remember, that you've got this friend. Well, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you liked this video or you learned something, please click the like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Friend.